Hello friends, George Creamer here, missional pastor and instructor in missional leadership. And uh, I've titled this lesson, Mission and Exodus in the Bible. The Exodus account is a crucial event in the Bible in relation to God's mission on earth. To set the stage, it is helpful to set the backdrop of how the children of Israel fell into slavery in the first place. Toward the latter half of Genesis, Joseph wins the favor of the Egyptian pharaoh by interpreting his dreams of the coming famine. This foresight compelled the pharaoh to stockpile provisions, making the people inhabiting the land extremely dependent on him once the famine hit the land. They were forced to trade in their land and livestock for food, making the pharaoh exceedingly powerful in the region. Joseph also rose in prominence and was the key figure in growing Pharaoh's empire. He was placed in a leading and esteemed role, being in charge of the exchanges between the people and Pharaoh. Unfortunately, over the course of time, the memory of Joseph in Egypt would fade, would fade and the 400-year enslavement of the Israelites would emerge. A few hundred years later, a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And we read this in Exodus 1.8. Enslaved, they could not fulfill the important task which was previous, previously assigned to Abraham and his descendants. In his mercy, God hears the cries of the children of Israel and remembers a covenant established with Abraham and his descendants. And we read that in Exodus chapter 2, verses 20, 24. God intervenes and liberates the children of Israel from Egypt by way of the plagues. Through this event, God begins the process of forming a nation who would fulfill His mission on earth. God reestablishes His covenant with Israel at the base of Mount Sinai, and we read that in Exodus 19, forming them into a nation. The following verse God expressed his will for the children of Israel and the reason for which he had liberated them from slavery through Moses. And it reads, Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. And we read that in Exodus chapter 19, verses 5 through 6. There was a purpose in mind for Israel's liberation. They were unable to fulfill their potential as long as they were in bondage. Now free, if only they would align themselves with God's direction and will, they would be able to fulfill the role that God had intended for them from the beginning. So in this lesson, I'm going to explain the three reasons why God freed Israel. And this is based from the passage from Exodus chapter 19, verses 5 through 6. The first reason he freed them from slavery was so they can be his special treasure. Israel was to be God's special treasure. In another translation, they are described as God's treasured possession. God dealt with the children of Israel much differently in comparison with the people of the surrounding nations. In line with the call given to Abraham and his descendants in Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 through 3, they were given a mandate to be a blessing. Michael W. Goheen makes the connection clear, writing, God will pursue his purposes for all creation through Israel, first making Abraham into a great nation and then blessing all the nations and all creation through that nation. There were no other people groups beside the children of Israel through which God's blessings would reach the nations. What made them special was the unique assignment and role which they were given. There was nothing specific which they had done to earn this special status. Also, their unique calling did not mean that they were superior to the surrounding nations. They were elected out of all the people groups for the benefit of the nations, not only their own. It was both a privilege to have this special relationship with God, 
but more was demanded and expected of them. They were freed from slavery so they can fulfill God's purposes of blessing the nations, which is a continuation of the promise given to Abraham in Genesis 12, verses 1 through 3. Through Abraham and his descendants, all the people groups on earth would be blessed. Their purpose was hindered under the evil rule of Pharaoh, who had other ambitions, which did not align with Yahweh's plans. They were God's treasured possession through which his presence would reach the nations and through whom his name would be known. But as long as they were in slavery, they cannot fulfill this special mission. So God had to intervene. We move on to the second reason God liberated them. And it was for them to be priests on earth. As a whole, Israel was called to be priests. They would bring blessing to the nations by living as a kingdom of priests and serve as God's representatives on earth. As priests, Israel would give their full devotion to serve Yahweh and His purposes. Their service would be devoted to only Yahweh in contrast to the surrounding pagan nations who served many gods. Priests would serve as connectors between the people and God. One of the primary roles of priests was to teach the law of God to the people. Through their teaching, people would know the will and ways of Yahweh. This was an important role since they would make known what pleases the Lord. Also, they would maintain order in relation to how Israel would approach and worship a holy God. They would facilitate the forgiveness of the sins of Israel through the animal sacrificial system. Through animal sacrifice, worshipers would have their sins forgiven, which brought restored fellowship with a holy God. In these two functions, teaching and sacrifice, they would serve as the bridge between the people and God. This same vision was God's hope on a much wider scale for Israel. The Lord desired that the entire nation of Israel would become His priests to all the nations on earth. He desired for them to mediate and manifest God's presence throughout the earth and be the vessel through which all nations would come to know the Lord. We move on to the third and final reason why God liberated Israel from slavery, which was for them to be His holy people. They were also to be His holy people, which is central to God's mission to the nations. Holy means to be set apart from all other nations, but with a purpose in mind. They were to be the example of how people were to live on earth mainly through right relationship with God, neighbor, and land. Israel was to be the instrument through which God's will for the nations would be made known on earth. When the nations see how differently Israel lived in contrast to the pagan nations, they would be drawn to worship their God. In the words of Michael W. Goheen, mission is God's people living in God's way publicly before the eyes of the nations. Israel was not to be isolated from the world, but different. They were to be a sort of display, a showcase of how following God's voice and commands changes lives for the better. They were to uh, carry out God's mission and give God glory through their priestly and holy living. As they drew all nations to worship the one true God, the result is that they would be blessed. Israel was God's special treasure and through their priestly service and holy living would call all nations to glorify and worship Yahweh. So in closing, in the same way that the children of Israel were liberated from bondage in the Exodus account in the Old Testament, believers also experience an Exodus when they are, when they are called out of darkness into Christ's marvelous light. God has interrupted Satan's plans and has freed us from the bondage through Christ's death and resurrection. It is because God has set us free that we are able to live into His intentions in our lives. Before we came to receive Christ as Lord, we served the Pharaoh that rules the ways of the fallen world. But now, through Christ, 
we are set free from serving useless idols and called to be his hands, feet, and mouthpieces. Just like Israel, Christians are God's special treasure who have a special assignment and role to carry out. Through Christ, believers are now the kingdom of priests who serve as ambassadors between fallen creation and God, working to restore restore that broken relationship. The church is now God's holy people set apart to represent Christ on earth. The vision in Exodus 19 verses 5 through 6 is fulfilled in the new covenant through Christ. The priestly sacrificial system in the Old Testament, which was only a temporary solution, is now fulfilled through Christ's shed blood on the cross. The church is now God's special treasure. The church is a kingdom of priests. The church is a holy nation who continue the ministry which Jesus began. As believers, we follow in the footsteps of Christ by proclaiming and demonstrating God's eternal and sacrificial love for all the world. Thank you and God bless. For more training on missional leadership, a course is available at senttotheworld.org. Be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and visit our social media outlets. If you wish to communicate with me directly, you can email me at jorge at org.